Just a friendly reminder that the opinions expressed on this show are not worth a Canadian penny, so disregard anything you hear that might get anyone in trouble. And despite some of the great ideas you may hear, don't try them at home. Go to friend's house instead. It's time to get a gun. That's what I've been thinking. Well, I could afford one. And if I did just a little less drinking, time to put something between me and the sun. Welcome to Slimefire Radio. This is episode 428 for October 28th, 2021. I'm okay, I have to Rachel. stop you. What's that? 2828? <laughs> it's October. Gonna... Last Slime. week I said did April. I say what did I say? Nobody noticed. You said October. Okay, good. But, last but you said, I said April. April. It was an yeah. April Fool's joke just six months too early, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nobody noticed. Anyways, I'm a host, Anyways. Adriel. I'm another host, Kyle. I'm another host, Mo. And I'm Kelly, who interrupts. <laughs> and and uh, mistakes their months, uh, six months apart. <laughs> yeah. I totally didn't even know I was doing it. I don't know how I came up with April, but it was April. I'd hate to see, if, if we still had checks around, I'd hate to see what you wrote on your checks. Probably like still on 2012 or 2011 or something like that. Eh? Who uses checks? <laughs> <laughs> you, you obviously wanted nothing to do with winter and you were ready to jump back right? into, into spring skip yeah, the entire sense. thing this year I really terrible like idea I hate I hate winter I like skiing I like snowmobiling I like skating I like building snowmen but I hate snow and cold sounds like you love winter you should move to yeah, I was just going to say that sounds like you love winter <laughs> if we could do it all in one day and get it over with that'd be awesome Mm. One day of winter, and then let's move on. Okay. Yes, the twenty fifth of December is perfect. <laughs> cool. Well, what we did in guns this week is brought to you by the Calgary Shooting Center, Canada's premier firearms retailer. Right now, they've got Federal Black Cloud, which apparently is like practically cyanide for ducks and geese. You just fire it close to them, and it just wipes them out. Really? Mm-hmm. It's shotgun ammo. It kills yeah. the ducks and geese and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> you you know something about that though killing the ducks and the geese yeah I'm yeah going tomorrow as well getting oh, up do you, want to, do you want to start sleeping. us off with what we did in guns okay so i did a few things this week and week week when week week whatever so i took a new shooter to the range and she had an amazing time it taught we um it was a uh, front neck, by the way. Uh, we did all kinds of things. Uh, we did a couple of different calibers of pistols. We did shotgun. So I brought her, um, and it was, I gave her the opportunity to try it my 1022 as well. She goes, oh, <laughs> I like this. She uh, didn't spoil her right off the hop. I know. She's going she's gonna to go buy a 1022 and she's gonna be like, oh, this isn't like Kelly's. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, I kind of lied to you. She went out a week ago and her brother took her out and he had a 1022 and it was stock model. And I said, oh, she showed me a picture. She was all excited about it. And I said, oh, that's awesome. Good for you. And she goes, I want to go shooting. I said, do you want me to take you? And she goes, yes, please. And I said, would you like to try pistol? And she said, yes, please. So she, uh, so she was able to... Well, we we got there at one o'clock. We got done at five o'clock, so we spent four hours on the range, and she she kept going. Um, Twelve gauge shotgun, she loved it. My twenty eight, she liked even better. Uh, and as I said, the uh, the ten twenty two that I have uh, again, she tried it. She tried her brother's, and then she tried mine. She goes, "Oh, oh, I like this." And the other part of it is I set her up with some proper instruction as well. My brother didn't. And uh, so with pistol as well as rifle and as well as shotgun, she goes, this is amazing. She goes, I didn't hurt my shoulder basically with the, um, with the Benelli. But uh, yeah, she had a great time. She told everybody about it. Now everybody wants to, and now everybody wants to go shooting. So which is great. Awesome. Yeah, so right immediately afterwards as well at the range, I had a range orientation RSO meeting. So I'm going to be taking the new shooters that are going to be onboarding in November. They have to come and do three probationary shoots. So I'm going to be helping with that as well. 
tomorrow I'm getting up and really early in the morning and I'm going to go over to the Kincaid Ranch and do some duck hunting because it's been raining mm. this last little while. Tomorrow it's not supposed to be raining, but they've been flying in the morning, not in the evening. So I'm going to go and actually shoot some ducks in the morning. Do the ducks work. care about the rain? Yeah, they do. I've like I've always heard like like water off a duck's back shouldn't be a problem for them. Yeah, they just mm. they just they don't fly in, they don't come, they don't. Mm. Yeah, every time that I've gone duck hunting when it's been raining, which hasn't been a lot, they have they haven't come in. Hmm. So right. yeah. they're f- fussy about rain. Okay, good to know. Did you go duck yeah. hunting last weekend? I thought you were going to go duck hunting last week. Nope, didn't no? go duck. Mm. No, no, going to go this. So good tomorrow. Just duck, geese? No geese. Any other kind of flying animals? Just anything that comes in? Mm, Yeah, basically. But no. Uh, The other Kelly is going for a goose hunt with the uh, Canadian Sportswomen's Association this weekend. But I'm Mm -hmm. going to be doing a maple seed. Two days in Ottawa, Sisville. We're going to be doing that. And one of them is a Canadian University Shooting Federation uh, event on Saturday. So it's mostly going to be students. And then on Saturday, it's just a one to the general public. But it's supposed to rain cats and dogs both days. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Great way to end the year. Awesome. Just saying. <laughs> what else am I doing? Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. What about you, Mo? Uh, I uh, picked up the pace for my dry firing because I have the two matches this weekend. So one Saturday, one Sunday. The outdoor one, uh, the one on Sunday will be outdoors, and it's in at Eastern Ontario, so it's going to be in that area. So oh, cool. yeah, it's it's going to be rainy, um, but it's going to be prob- pretty much the last outdoor one I'm going to be doing this year. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, the the one on Saturday is at CTM, the in, uh, indoor, and uh, I was disappointed because uh, this is the second um, indoor match that hasn't sold out, and I'm thinking it's it's all to do with uh, COVID. COVID passport, yeah. yeah. So our people clearly <laughs> are in the unvaccinated camp. So yeah. uh, because I mean. Pre-COVID, I confirmed with my friend Louis because he's very, very in tuned in the the uh, Quebec shooting uh, scene. And yeah, the, these matches would always sell out within the first couple of minutes. And now they're not, you know, like half filling up and stuff. So, and this is the yeah. second one. So it's 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 well, disappointing, but I understand it, I guess. Yeah, so. the same thing's happening here. Um, our indoor stuff, outdoor. We have some outdoor stuff still happening. Those are selling out within minutes, but indoor? Yeah. But or we're canceling them. We're not doing them. We're not going to be doing any at uh, FRPC hmm. over the over the winter. Yeah, it's disappointing indoor. because, you know, I, yeah, it's, it's disappointing because, I yeah. mean, mm-hmm. obviously we have to go through a winter and we want to keep shooting. And uh, I'm hoping that, you know, when we get into January, February, that this stuff will go away, but. Now, today, there was, uh, I don't know, there was a story about the Delta Plus variant. So I'm like, oh, great. Oh. Just just more. <laughs> just put on your parka and go shoot outside. Just go to the outdoor shooting ranges. <laughs> this is the man that has snow currently. <laughs> hey. Do I have snow right now? I saw pictures. Sherwood Edmonton, Park. Calgary. Snow. Calgary? Edmonton? Was it Sherwood Park that was a little frosty? Everybody had dukes on. It was white on the ground. Oh, really? Yeah. Ah. Oh. Alberta. It was nice here today. Oh, it's nice here. And we just totally threw Mo off his truck. Oh, uh, I just had one, <laughs> one more thing. I just did a bunch of reloading for the nine mil for the for the for the match, and uh, and then tomorrow I'm gonna head to help with the build for the CTM, the indoor one, and uh, that's it. How about you, Kyle? Uh, well, I won the lottery. Yeah. What? Got into Superstition Mountain. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh. Congratulations. Okay, that's still really cool, but I was yeah. hoping that you would, uh, you know. Oh, yeah, me too. Won the lottery and fly us uh, I won. I should have said I won a lottery. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Because the way they do the registration is a lottery. So, won the lottery, got in, so submitted my match fee. So, when are you getting your double stick? <laughs> 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 working that out 
(laughs) (laughs) Working that out. Uh, But so I got a few months to figure that out. And I'm just like you said last time, cross my fingers. Hope that things change before then. But uh, yeah. Hope so too. What do you mean? The regulation? Hopefully they don't require it to go down in like six months time. Um, no. Yeah, I know, but we'll see. <laughs> Other than that, I mean, I really want to go. There's only one reason why I would have actually paid the match fee. Like, it was different this year, this year because normally they give you a week to pay. This time, they in the email, is like, pay in three days or you're, you're, you're out. You're done? Yeah. So, yeah. that was more different. Reasonable. Uh,. That's about it this week, but this weekend is actually going to be a busy weekend because we got a little bit more wood. So we're going to go and finish off the 60 yard because we didn't get enough wood to do the 100 yard range. But we can go and uh, figure out the 60 yard and get that finished up and ready for fill. And then on Sunday, I've actually lined up with a couple people. And yes, Sean, I got more wood. (laughs) (laughs) But Sunday, I'm actually going to be sitting down with a couple guys and recording another episode of The Asylum. So I should be able to have that out by the end of next week. Good stuff. Yeah. You can listen to it. Yeah. It should be interesting. I think uh, people are actually really going to be interested in it. Um, Don't really want to go into too many details but it has well, just give us with... a quick synopsis so that people can go over and listen to you. once they're done slime fire they'll go over and listen to you so the it's couple guests i have right? on recently traveled down to the states to shoot in a big match and so mm-hmm. we're gonna go over that match and the experience of traveling with guns which i mean i've done but maybe not a lot of listeners and it's actually pretty simple and it's then also doing go... it during like it's easier COVID to go times over. now. Sorry? Yeah. It's easier to go over with them and then come back, actually. Oh, absolutely. I've yeah. had more hassles coming back than going down. Mm-hmm. And for Sean, The Asylum, that is a podcast I had started doing before I joined Slamfire, just a solo Blue Into Tactical podcast. Uh, very informal, more fireside chat, long episodes usually. So, what episode just do you me have? talking with people, literally just talking. <laughs> what episode are you on? Uh, uh, I think this will be episode five. Mm-hmm. It's been a. So, it's, it, it, I it, took it, a yeah, bit of a sabbatical. Yeah, I took a little bit of a break as soon as I joined uh, Slam Fire, but last month I got an episode out, and we're going to get this one recorded, and I'm going to try to get at least an episode a month out. Awesome. Of that, so that's good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And. Unknown snipers? No, they're not snipers. They're competition shooters. But don't want to give I away know all the are. details. I just a little bit I, to real people in. <laughs> I know who they are. I know who you're gonna have on. You, you probably gave away no, too I, much already. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. Yeah, but that's that's pretty much what's going on with me right now. So... You haven't John Wick, right? Hmm? You haven't John Wick. Yeah, John absolutely. Wick. Yeah, John Wick. Yeah. Can of Weaves. Yeah. yeah. The John Wick. On. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. All right. I think that takes it to me. Um, I hit the range with a listener, Thomas. Uh, so he's uh, gearing up for deer hunting this year. And uh, so I'm like, hey, have you sighted in yet? And he's like, nope. So I'm like, all right, let's go to the range and sight in. I need to sight my stuff in any- anyways. So. Took what are using? I took the Maverick and I took my oh. Axi Axis out, and uh, the Maverick doesn't like my 140s, those new ones Ooh. that those uh, the Seiko ammo that I got. So I either got to make some 130s or just use the 140s and just don't care about the fact that it's popping primers on it. Oh, um, I don't really like that idea though. So yeah. probably... over pressured popping primers. It's doing it with like factory ammo. It just does not like 140 grain bullets. If you run 130s with it, it's fine. fine. If you run 140s, doesn't like it. Mm. Doesn't like it. So, yeah, I think I'm just going go to and... run the axis and make okay. it easy. 
Uh, at the same time, I got like some footage with my uh, with my spotting scope and uh, phone scope knockoff thing that puts my phone on the camera thing and slow motion and vapor trails of bullets and all that kind of stuff. It's really neat. Yeah, I saw that. It was really cool. Yeah, yeah. I put it up on Instagram. It's just yep. like, it's neat. Yeah, man, like using the video camera on that thing on the target. Oh, oh, so good. Because <laughs> you could just video it and be like, oh, okay, uh, there and doing this. And oh, I'm totally off the paper. Okay, I'm going to re- rewind. Okay. Oh, there's the bullet splash right there. Okay, perfect. I'm going to go up and over here. And it's just better better in so many different ways you, you don't miss any shots it's just yeah. perfect yeah very convenient and for a gun reviewer boy fantastic for catching some downrange footage right so yeah, yeah. that's cool yep yeah, yeah i think it's gonna be cool um and then for his rifle we were cha- like um he's running a, a 303 with a scope on it and yep. it was we we're having uh zeroing issues which i believe were the scope um because we'd make an adjustment and it would do like Something, nothing something nothing or uh something, something totally not what we asked it to do okay. and it's like an older scope so he's uh he's hunting for a, a new scope to put on it now what was he what was he running for a scope it was like an older tasco 4x okay yeah, yeah and yeah. some of those are like you guys you set it you never touch it again and it'll be fine for like yeah. decades but then some you adjust it and they they get all screwy on you which i have experience with too with with that same model of scope uh, my dad's scope. Um, yeah. Anyways, it was a, it was a good time at the range. Uh, Chaz three gun got a replacement stage vehicle donated from guardian auto. So we had our, uh, our stage car got smashed by some uh, miscreants and uh, hmm. these guys were like, Hey, this motor's toast. Do you guys want this? Uh, I think it's a Jeep Patriot. Yeah. Jeep Patriot. Nice. Said, I think it's, Please. I had I had one of those before, and it's like yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the, 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 <laughs> okay, the pre the previous car we had as a stage vehicle was this tiny little Kia, which is actually really great because we could like drag it around and push it around there. But, like so, as a stage prop, very convenient. Yeah, a little bit tight, a little bit tight getting in there. Um, this one is going to be a little bit more comfortable and uh, and fit more people. So yeah. our our bigger guys who shoot three gun will be happy to see <laughs> a bigger vehicle now. We could like a clown car. See how many people even fit in it. Oh, that other one was very small. But again, yeah. like very light, super easy to drag around with a chain in a vehicle and whatnot. <laughs> this one's awesome. gonna be a bit heavier. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually gonna uh, meet one of your Chaz guys on Saturday. Oh yeah. Yeah, and Chris. Um, last name Schaefer. Oh, cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a Sherwood Park Fishing Game Association AGM later tonight. I oh, is it? That. Yeah. 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 Maybe I'll go to that, see what's going on. And then I got a trigger video out. Um, it's not next to me here, but uh, Rick had loaned me a Tandem Cross Ultimate uh, trigger kit, which is a uh, trigger kit you can pop into a 1022. And it yep. was uh, very nice. Yeah, like it. Yeah, they're, they're pricier though. Like that's a yeah, $170 yeah. Uh, trigger kit, right? But yeah. it's, it's super nice. nice. Yeah, yeah, super nice. Uh, so I got that video out, put a couple memes in it. And since it was like, so since it was like a gun mod video, so with, with YouTube, they will not monetize anything. That's like a gun mod video or like anything that they think is unsafe, which who the heck knows what it is. Gun mods for sure though. So this was, since this was a gun mod video, I used copyrighted music. I put memes in there, (laughs) all sorts of things that would have got it demonetized anyway. It's like this assembly, all a whole shebang. I put it in there. So that was my, if I'm going in, I'm going in deep. What's that? That was pretty meme heavy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was very oh, enjoyable, well. but <laughs> it was longer than I thought it was going to be because of the install. And someone's like, "Ah ha ha!" Like you're such a joke with the time that it took. I'm like, "Oh, sorry, it took so long." He's like, "No, did you take a look at how long it is? It's a 10:22 trigger. It's 10 minutes and 22 seconds." <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh I only, I only wish I was that clever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's just a coincidence. <laughs> Happy coincidence. Yeah, 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 exactly. But uh, that's good. It's good time. So, yeah, I got that video out. I'm hoping to get a couple more out here as well uh, coming up soon. So I think, do I have gun stuff on the way? I got to set in my kid's rifle this weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, like, this weekend is is it. So after this weekend, it's it's hunting season. So I'm going to be out to 
doing deer and hopefully moose. Hopefully moose. Where are you going hunting? Um, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go with Thomas to. Uh, I don't know. Some somewhere around uh, uh, west of here. Okay. Um, and then I've got to go a week to booked off where I'm gonna head out to my parents' place and do some hunting out there. That's where I've got my moose tag. So okay, that's where I gotta go. And if I get a moose, whew, yeah. Yeah, gonna need some freezer space. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. set for if the I, year. If I get it early in the in the week, I might try to process the whole thing myself. If I get it like mid or late, no chance. No. Straight to the butcher, not doing it because it's just it's so much work. Yeah, but early, I could do that. I could do that. <laughs> One of the nice things about hunting in in Alberta is that by the time it's November and it's hunting season, uh, oh. your garage or shop or whatever, wherever you're storing your your deer or moose or whatever it's probably cold enough like we don't have issues of uh of meat rotting or anything like that our my the issue i more frequently run into is uh uh they they freeze meat freezes yeah and so and then you gotta rewarm you're not it up. hanging very long then if you're gonna... well I'll, I'll hang like a a couple of days if if i can, if i can hmm. so if i shoot it early in the week then i'll leave hang for a couple of days and i gotta get processing that'll take a while yeah, I'm not doing like a a 30 day uh, dry age or anything like that. <laughs> no, a couple days, make sure the blood drains out of it, and then start hacking Good it up. Yeah. See, I'm a minimum seven days, up to 14 days for when I hang animals. Do you have a climate controlled spot where you're putting your deer or moose or whatever? Well, when I get my moose, I I send it to the butchers and the butchers they I take it. it to. They have yeah. no problem hanging it for 14 days, or yeah. I'll keep the heat off in my garage and then I can, I can hang at the instance it's insulated that the meat's not going to freeze and it'll keep it cool enough. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's the problem with, um, uh, the garage I usually put it in is it isn't insulated. Um, and it like, it, it varies. It never gets warm enough to, to care, but it does get cold enough where it's like, it's ice now. And mm-hmm. I, there's no point in hanging a, a, an animal when it's, when it's just a, a block of ice. There's, yeah. you're not, you're not doing anything. Although we've done it, like growing up, my dad actually had a mule deer and it froze. They went to go butcher. Oh, frozen. So it warmed up again, thawed out. They went to go, but made a plan to butcher. Oh, froze again. So it froze like two or three times. And they, it was like the best year we ever had. Really? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. All that freezing and and unfreezing, like very slow. Like they just tenderized the meat. meat. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not sure if it's if you're supposed to like. Generally, with with food safety, they don't like you to like thaw and then freeze and thaw yeah. and freeze and yeah. Yeah. over and over. Yeah, <laughs> we're but, still yeah. we're still. Although next week it's supposed to cool down a little bit, the high temperatures are just barely breaking the teens. So for us, yeah, no, it's cold enough here. It's definitely yeah. cold enough here. Yeah. This weekend coming up is it's supposed to all go south in terms of well, I'll go north in terms of temperatures. South, it's gonna be cold. south. South, oh, it's would, south, but like it's warmer in the south. I don't know. Yeah, it is warmer in the south. Sean Although it plummets the fat right away, so it doesn't. The freeze. temperature plummets, but yeah. I like oh, yeah. leaving a little bit of crappy stuff on on top, so that when I when I am ready to butcher, I can trim that off and then pack it up. Because if you if you like trim it right down to the meat, and then it like and it dries out sometimes it can get like dry yeah. and crappy well you get yeah. that skin on there I, i'm with sean i try and get as much of the fat or the tallow off because it's such got such a waxy taste to it i don't want that getting into the meat so mm-hmm. as soon as i hang i'll cut any bloodshot out or and trim off the tallow clean it up as best as i can and then you know what, if i have some loss due to the uh the crust that forms on the outside so be it that's yeah. that's the way i grew yeah. up doing and i think it whenever i hear someone's talking about he, eating wild game and it being gamey first thing i go to it wasn't hung, hung long hung long enough yeah hmm. so tim's talking about how he uh so he's talking about 60 to 70 degrees so obviously 20 25 degrees uh and when he does his deer hunting and then he has to pack it in ice so poor tim um and then also crystal's no talking such. about it going to be the hot daytime high of two so good luck with that guys yeah <laughs> anyways yeah that's, that's the perfect. weekend for us crystal's my wife if anyone's wondering so <laughs> oh hi crystal <laughs> thanks for watching oh yeah crystal warner yeah, she's good. <laughs> yeah. She's good. She's good. She's roasts 
call yeah. fat is probably the fat you're thinking of the call yeah fat. the call fat the webbing yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah you can use that for your for your wraps for roasts anywho oh, yeah. we I'm should do those man. roasts or we should do those recipes and post them online mm. yeah wild mm -hmm. game mm. yep mm -hmm. if i got a moose i'm gonna have to make a couple of recipes for moose because it's a little how bit of eat, get off one of those how do you eat moose with my mouth. One bite at a time. <laughs> One bite at a time. Yeah, there we One go. One big bite at a time. time. Yeah. Lots okay. of jerky. Lots Straight of... off the Actually, bowl. I'm, I'm not going to make a bunch of jerky. I used because... to be an old jerk. I used to be, how do you need an elephant? One bite at a time. Mm -hmm. But a moose, good enough. By the steak. Yeah. 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 Anyways, that's. I think that's it for me. There's sort of supposed to be a bunch of like Aurora this weekend, if you're interested. Mm. Uh... Upcoming events sponsored by Telos Alpha. Telos Alpha is a Canadian digital agency that works exclusively in the firearms vertical. They help with business processes, strategic planning, websites, e-commerce, and battling the stigma the industry carries with banks, merchant processors, and social media. Learn more at telosalpha.com. Mm -hmm. We have an event here from Chris. It's an action pistol match in Guelph, Ontario, Friday, November 19th at 2 p.m. or Saturday, November 20th at 9 and 11 a.m. Multiple mm -hmm. entries. I was going to say, so that or, so you could either, or it's a one-day match, either. but they're running two days? Yeah, I think so. This looks like three cohorts, three groups of people mm, yeah. going through. Neat. Nice. So I just want okay. to let everybody know that there is going to be a Ladies' Day at Lower Trent Valley all this weekend, October the 30th. They still have places available for people, so if you're interested, go to Eventbrite or go to Lower Trent Valley uh, website or onto Facebook as well, and you can find registration there. Cool. Yep. And we got a comment on one from Sean Sniper Series this weekend at the Roof Rooster Rifle Ranch. We're Rick's going to be there. Where's the oh. Rooster Rifle Ranch? Something like. I think it's Saskatoon. around Saskatoon, actually. Mm. Mm. Cool. I what believe if... I saw the post for it earlier today. Me too. I think it's Sean. Confirm. Deny. <laughs> deny. 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 Yeah. Deny. <laughs> Always deny. Yeah. <laughs> Private range outside of Saskatoon. Saskatoon. So where? So Sean's typing this as we we talk about it. Sean, where can people? Yeah, it's Kurt's uh, range. Yeah. So where can people register for this if they're interested, or is it still open? I'm super upset that I can't make it. That's uh, Mike. Sorry. Well, we're reading yeah, these as we too. go. Yep. Yeah. All right. Into the news. Uh, first, a little bit of practice news. Score. Oh, okay. It is on practice score. So. Okay. Oh, good. Cool. Okay. Thanks. Should make it easy. Yeah. Uh, Marco is our new uh, purse minister in charge of public safety. Marco, yeah, we're I can't remember his last name. Some Toronto lawyer who's very anti-gunner. In fact, there was a, a video with like, um, uh, oh, no. It was lost. the gun debate date mm -hmm. night. Yeah. So it's Glenn Motts that was yes. uh, doing it with Glenn him. Yeah. Uh, so Marco is from, uh, he is the MP for Elgin. Um, he's downtown Toronto, basically, just mm. north of you downtown know. Toronto. Lawyer, no, he's, he's anti-gunner. No, he's not. Surprise, downtown. surprise. Well, he works downtown, but he's the MP for Eglinton. So, uh, this past, not this past weekend, the weekend before, there was three shootings in Toronto, and they all took place in or around his area. It's probably they him. Were, they were not um, <laughs> legal gun owners. Oh, you think so? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they were not legal gun owners, and so therefore, yeah. They were not legal gun owners. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I how how <laughs> didn't oh. have their ATTs. That's that's no. like, one. well. That's what I mean. Like how how can they do that? Exactly. <laughs> People just break the law. Uh, and then Alec Baldwin's shooting a movie, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> CCFR legal legal fund donations. Kelly, do you want to go through those? Sure. Um, okay, so just to let you know, apparently there is, if you want to go over to the CCFR, uh, it's more important than ever to donate towards the legal donation, or sorry, the legal challenge. You can go over there uh, to the website uh, and click on the link there to donate, or you can even donate to win one of those beautiful signs. Apparently there's a new sign, and mm -hmm. it's $10. You can win it. Kyle even has one, one win. Uh, as well, or you can send an EMT to finance at firearmsrights.ca and they will put that towards the legal challenge as well. 
Now, we also have a contest that's going on. It's a great contest, by the way. It says, keep your right to defile your guns. And yes, you can still modify your rifles or your guns with Dremels. If you want to. If you want to. Mm. If you want to. Right. If you listen to us, you will hear us often talk about how we love to use the Dremel. It's everyone's favorite tool, specifically Adriel. Um, with the way that uh, things are going soon, you may not even be able to modify guns with uh, with files or Dremels, but with Slamfire Radio, CCFR Challenge, Legal Challenge, Fundraiser, uh, you can help save your rights to win a chance and win a chance at a Dremel to Dremel your way to freedom. I think that's, wasn't that Kyle's quotation? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Dremel your way to freedom. Here's how you can win a chance to win an Adriel, the Dremel demigod, autographed, cordless Dremel, 8,220? 8, 8, it's do we an 8,220. It's a cordless, it's a cordless Dremel. Yep. It's a cordless Dremel. Anyway, step one, you can go to the donate to the CCFR Legal Challenge by clicking on what I just said. And then you can send us, uh, or you can send an EMT to finance at uh, firearmrights.ca with the password of help CCFR. Step two. Send us an email with proof of donation. Make sure you include your name, contact info, my, com, contact info at slamfireradio at gmail.com. It's like I've never talked before. Anyways. <laughs> okay. Take your draw, time. Yeah. The, the, draw happens, the, the draw happens on November 18th. And uh, I think it's midnight. We were talking about, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm not going at midnight. We're just going to do it on the air. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes. Uh, the draw is going to be happening on November 18th. So we have a couple of people who donated this week. We have Anthony N, Joel H, Russ N, and Lincoln W. We're going to add you to the list of people who have already donated. So good luck with that. Awesome. Yeah. And then um, we've also had some donations to the CCFR Legal Fund from, uh, from different uh, gun clubs. Uh, Esther Hazy oh, yeah. Wildlife Federation donated 2500 Ipsic New Brunswick donated 1300 and Medicine Hat Rifle and Revolver Club donated ten thousand bucks. Ooh, nice! Wow, big dollars! Yeah, big money, big money. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. But you know, they should have emailed us with proof so they could try to win that Dremel. Club. Then they Dremel? could have a like, club what Dremel. Club has a club Dremel. That would be so amazing. A club like, Dremel. He had like maple seed rifles. Like, oh, you don't have the auto bolt mod. Let me go over. Let's just take this rifle over to the club Dremel and let's Dremel it right now. I joined Jet Club just for the fact that there's a Dremel right there. Hmm. What, what else would you need? It would be super yeah. well equipped if they've got that Dremel. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Adriel. Uh huh. Thanks for picking up my slack. <laughs> I tried doing it smoothly. You don't have to point it out. <laughs> <laughs> it was very hey, smooth. Have you ever listened to the Jackal po- uh, podcast? All the time, yeah. Yeah, it's extreme ownership. Anyways, yep. thanks for picking up my slack there, bud. No problem. I'm, I'm concentrating on my <laughs> dogs barking in the background. My kids walking in. Anyways. Oh, I didn't hear that. You didn't hear my dog barking? Yeah, we heard your dog barking. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Club Labrador. Ooh, that's fancy. Yeah, Ooh, that'd that be, would be that's too fancy. Yeah, that's that that's leave. right up there. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know what happened at my club? What's that? What? We installed cameras at the long range. So at the 400. You guys didn't have. Oh, so, sorry. Wait. Oh, like target, at target cameras. At the targets. Ooh. Oh, nice. So fancy, what you can fancy. do is you can actually. So you can ask to be given the password and you can log in. And you can shoot and see your hits. Wow. That my mind. Is, yeah, that's, that's amazing. Awesome. That's amazing. That yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, we just did that. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. the future now. I thought you were going to say, this like, should oh, be cameras the at the long range. Like, oh, big deal. Like, every, like all the uh, most gun clubs have cameras to prevent people from stealing. But no, you're <laughs> at the target line. At mm-hmm. the target. For the shooters benefit like that. That's yeah. mm-hmm. awesome. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Isn't that cool? You know, one thing, uh, Bonneville, Bonneville has rests that are like right at the, sh- at the, uh, different bays. So you can like, you can grab a, uh, what do you call it? That rock, the, the super steady rest lead sled, you can get lead sleds and just like pop them out and that's like, super nice. Cause you imagine like storing, like hauling a lead sled, putting it in your truck, bringing it out mm-hmm. to the range or 
the range just has a bunch of lead sleds you can just crack them out and, and do your quick sighting or whatever i love it yeah. so nice like we have rests but they're not lead sleds they just hold yeah. the fore end but yeah a lot, some ranges will do like uh the um the car jack ones the scissor jack that, that goes up kind of a thing with mm. the rest in the middle um I don't see the point of those though, because like the the mini rock ones that you can get from Caldwell are like forty bucks. Why well, like do the welding and get the other stuff when you can just get one of those? Anyways, I love yeah. topic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, New Gun Stuff is sponsored by Bolt Action Coffee. Slamfire Radio is a brand ambassador for Bolt Action Coffee. The coffee is roasted in small batches and is quite honestly some of the best coffee you can get your hands on. Send it to your house by going to boltactioncoffee.com and using discount code Slamfire. Hmm. New gun stuff. Um, there's a couple in here. The one that uh, was kind of interesting, Beretta's BRX1 is a straight pull uh, bolt action rifle, I guess, from Beretta. Straight action bolt. Straight pull bolt action. Straight pull. It, you know when you when you watch a video that like there's a, a first one they mention it I'm like ah big deal who cares there's lots of oh another Europe fancy European straight pull that I don't care about but that like the a way that they just then or... <laughs> well it actually uses an AR style rotating bolt uh, for the for the bolt head which is interesting and it's hammer fired that's weird most because <laughs> like most bolt actions are are striker fired not hammer fired. Yeah, they that's use, weird. Yeah, yeah, they use a yeah. hammer. Hmm. Yeah, and then yeah, like they probably use like a straight up AR bolt in there, and they just built their own BCG that you just crack back and forth, kind of a thing. Interesting. They found a way to take an AR and make it bolt action only. I'd imagine. I don't know. Hey Mo, mm-hmm. blink for us. Move. <laughs> I have been moving. <laughs> wait, wait, wait! I got something I know Mo is interested in. Yeah, SA thirty-five. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Show her up. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, oh, there we go. There's the SA thirty-five. It's, uh, it's a high power. Yep, it's a high power by Springfield. Uh, they've got a couple of things that they've modernized in it. Uh, they didn't put a magazine disconnect in it, which is good because those are really stupid. Mm-hmm. And they say factory tune trigger with a smooth pull and crisp clean Shoot. break, improved feed ramp, improved ergonomics, and enhanced controls, modern sights. Uh, all good things. I I gotta ask one question though. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna clone a gun, why clone a high the power? High power? Uh, like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, good. it's a great question. Fantastic question. Mm-hmm. There's some like I mean, high it sounds power like they changed quite a bit listening. in it, but why? <laughs> uh, well, okay. What if you really like the 1911, but you just kind of want something that's double stack? Yeah, that's true. Because it's kind of like double the stack 1911. 1911? <laughs> I, I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this was the Wonder Nine of its day, uh, but it but it has been e- eclipsed by uh, modern technology. Sean's mentioning that a lot of people in the states carry a high power. I have no That's idea why. True. This, this would be a terrible gun to carry. Just, yes, there's also yeah. a lot of people in the U.S. that carry high points as well. And those or, nine, or 1911s or uh, yeah. Desert Eagles or you know, I mean, I guess if whatever you got freedom, they can fit on their hip. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can max out that freedom. Do whatever you want. Desert Eagle carry. Wow. Okay. <laughs> really? Wow. <laughs> well, I imagine if there are people there that you? do it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I don't know. I mean, so uh, yeah. here's here's a, here's one thought. Uh, what if you wanted a high power be and you want something that's new and not old and uh, and you but you want you want a high power? What are your options? Not really Nothing. a lot. I think there uh, no aren't there a couple of uh, there's a couple of clones out there. Um, not great ones and i mean i don't i don't really like have a whole lot of respect for springfield as in terms of like a firearms company but maybe this one's all right maybe this gun's all right i'd be interested in trying it Hmm. Mm -hmm. sean's talking about buying a canuck high power yeah see there's a there's a clone and that's probably um turkish or something right yes it is and it's not bad Hmm. is a little Shot at yeah. the Odell industry days. I had uh, a lot of fun shooting it. Yeah. 
Anyways, that's kind of okay. neat. Uh, the next one is... Uh, oh, let me get it into the right tab. There we go. Uh, the JAR J180. The reports are coming in on these. There's a couple of interesting things. Interesting? Yeah. Weird. <laughs> There's a couple of weird things on this gun. What's going on? One, look at that buffer tube. It's not in line with the bolt. It's lower. Hmm. So you can't, you can't use a reaction rod to put the barrel on because there, if you put it through the pole in the back there, it doesn't line up. And you can't use a bev block either. So you got to use something else, either a, a barrel block or uh, make your own clamp for the upper or something like that. Oh, that's kind of weird. Just clamp the, it in the vice and go. Just clamp it. Just use some like rubber or something in there so you don't mar it and just, just send it. <laughs> that's mm. probably what I would do, actually. Yeah. Uh, the the fore end rail, it's hard to see here, but the fore end rail, it sits a little bit lower than the receiver rail. Uh, mm. So you wouldn't be able to use uh, I see that too. backup iron sights. Um, and yeah. then this is probably the most atrocious thing that's going on in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Screws. What do you think those screws are doing? They're um, stopping the magazine. They are, they stop the oh, magazine from over inserting. Over -inserting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is concerning. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh dear. I, 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 I like giving people the benefit of the doubt. Um, no benefit of the doubt here. It was a bad design. Yeah. Like, yeah, putting, putting Instead screws of doing there. Work on your mag release to ensure that we just add another thing in there to wear. <clears throat> it's a it's a butcher job. Yeah. Two point oh. That's the yeah. new one. That's uh, fine. That's fine. It yeah, it, it fine. rams the brass off the charging handle. Whatever. That's fine. I agree yeah. with Sean. Yeah. <laughs> Sean says you. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. Okay. But uh I mean, I'm looking I mean, forward to all the 180s coming out, but there's, yeah, like th those screws were one that I was like, uh. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anywho, that's that. Uh, the trigger that it comes with is supposed to be fantastic. Jar does make a, a decent uh, AR trigger, mm -hmm. and it comes with the rifle. So, I guess mm -hmm. you do. You wouldn't need to like with with a lot of the one other 180s. You take the trigger that came with it, and you promptly drop it into the garbage and put in something decent. You wouldn't have to with this one. It comes with a good trigger. So okay. I guess that's one thing that would uh, save you some money. Just let me use my AR. Yeah. 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 Uh, mm. Please. <laughs> no. 180s. Maybe the new safety minister will allow it. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. No. Yeah. Not going to happen. Uh, right. why don't, yeah, why don't we get into our main topic? So for today, uh, for our main topic, we're talking about layering on safety. And why would uh, we want to talk about that? Uh, we'll get to we'll get to it at the end. <laughs> we'll get to oh, it at okay. the end. All yeah, right. it'll be a full breakdown of uh, layers of safety and uh, and why they would stop <laughs> uh, a safety concern from uh, from happening. Uh, why don't we start off with basic? So basic rules for safety. What are the most basic rules that you guys follow? Mo? I think the most important one is always assume a firearm is loaded. Because mm. that one, if you go to pick up a gun, if you if you make that assumption, you're always going to do the right things to make sure that it's not. Right? So to me, that one is like the, the number one, even more important than the pointing in the right direction. Cause you're going to do that stuff anyways after, mm -hmm. but the, uh, you know, I'm going to make sure that this gun is not, not loaded. Okay. Right? Go Mo yeah. with going right to the, so I'll, the root of it. So I always assume that I, any firearm is loaded. Loaded. Yes. Okay. yes. I, I mean, you, so that's rule number one of, uh, Colonel Cooper's four. Yeah, it's for rules. a reason. Yeah. It's number one. So yeah. I guess I'm doing the same thing, but I had different words where I was going straight to, I don't point the muzzle anywhere that I not want to destroy anything. And that fingers off the trigger until I'm ready to pull the trigger. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones I live by. Kind of same thing as just, just add one more. Loaded, you got all but... four. You're <laughs> almost there, Kyle. You're almost there. So <laughs> because Cur Colonel Cooper's, uh, four rules are, are, Gun's not loaded. Uh, don't let the yeah. muzzle cover something you don't want to destroy. Keep your finger off the trigger until your sights are on the target, and then identify your target and what's behind it. Make yep. sure you know. Like, and all around. Yeah. 
Yeah. So those are yeah. good rules. Mm -hmm. Basic ones. And if you follow them, nothing bad should happen. Right? Mm -hmm. I trust bad. one of the other ones that is really good is don't trust anybody. I trust no one. No. Mm -hmm. You get handed a firearm. You just like you taught in your pal course. You check, check it. it. Check yeah. it. Yep. Yeah, don't say, oh, I, oh, I, uh, somebody else says to you, oh, I checked it. No, you still check it. Yeah. You still check you, it. You confirm. Yeah. Even if it was Adriel, anybody. I'd still check it. Yeah. Even if it was Adriel. <laughs> Especially if it's Adriel. It could be Adriel. It could be. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Nine millimeter. Always it could be Jerry Mitchell, like, and I'm still going to check yeah. it. Like. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Uh, okay, so we've got our basic rules. Uh, what about uh, one of the things that I thought would be interesting was was identify how rules are added on or removed depending on the situation because uh, uh, things change based on how many people are are have loaded firearms, where they're with those loaded firearms, and uh, what activity you guys are or the, the people are, are getting into. So, uh, what do you guys do while you're hunting? What rules do you follow? What condition do you hold your firearm in? And uh, yeah, what, what kind of like basic axioms do you go by? Okay, well, Kelly, I guess you're going to. Okay, so yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Kyle. So hunting, if I'm walking around the bush and say it's a rifle, I will have a round in the chamber, but it will be decocked because I shoot a bolt action for hunting. So if you keep your bolt up, you can pull the trigger as you close the bolt and it will not, your striker will not cock. It will be decocked. You actually have to cycle the bolt up and down to charge that. I don't do that. So that, that when I'm walking through the bush, usually I'm with somebody and if, if it's my coyote gun, it's got a super light trigger on it. So that's, that's what I do mm -hmm. with that. And it's, it's nothing to cycle that bolt. If I'm sitting in a stand, okay, I get in my stand, I get, situated i will then chamber and well not chamber i will actually arm the gun keep it on safe cock it yep and cock it yep interesting so, okay that's not what uh, i expected uh kelly what do you do when you're hunting what condition uh, do you put your firearm in well, actually, while I'm traveling to whatever area I'm going to be going to, I I don't actually have anything. Uh, I don't have it loaded. Mm -hmm. Once I get to the location where I'm going to be going, I will have uh, it. I will actually have it um, loaded. I uh, will have the safety on. I'm one of those. Um the other thing is, I also know, want to make sure I know where the other people I'm hunting with are as well. Make sure that uh, make sure that I'm aware of where they are, and uh, so that I'm not going to cross streams with them, or not going to actually cross shoot. streams is a is a uh, Ghostbusters thing. Guns can shoot. <laughs> yeah, I know. This way and it's fine. Just... <laughs> but you know what I mean. I'm not going to actually hit like them, that. whether it's with uh, with uh, pellets or even with a rifle, or whatever. So. so you have like your your sectors kind of a thing. Yeah, sectors sure that... set up. Yeah, and okay. I'm aware of where everybody is as well. So awesome. Yeah, yeah. Mike was commenting. Mag in no round in the chamber. Tell him about to fire. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I like if I'm going into a field and there's going to be there may be deer in there. I'm going to hike out to my uh, shooting spot. I load my gun up. Safety on. Yeah. Oh yeah, because mm -hmm. I've gotten so many deer where. I'm I'm walking out. I'm like, oh crap! There's a deer 50 meters in front of me. Flick off the safety, which is quiet, and I take my shot. And uh, while I'm hiking out, if I'm hiking out with someone else, I still do the same thing. I still load my firearm up, safety on, and uh, muzzle never gets anywhere close to the other person mm -hmm. I'm next to. Okay. So that means that uh, that limits what what carrying uh, what ways you can carry your rifle. Uh, so you can carry it like muzzle down. You can carry it yeah. uh, 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 holding the receiver. You can carry it slung, but you can't do anything where the muzzle is yeah. going to be anywhere close to the person that's that you're going to be next to. Yep. Uh, yeah, if one person's I... righty and one person's lefty, fantastic, because then mm -hmm. you can yeah. do the pointing the, uh, the opposite directions, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah, and I guess I didn't mention the the muzzle control or the triggering control. I whenever I have a firearm in my hands, that's yeah, that's yeah, what I do. I actually pissed off at my 
hunting partner, which sometimes it's amazing he's still my hunting partner because we'll be out there <laughs> grouse shooting, grouse hunting, and he'll flag me with a shotgun. I'll be like, dude. So how do you how do you carry it? How do you carry it? Do you cradle or do you? Uh it depends. I actually have a backpack that it can sit in. So if we're on a hike, mm-hmm. it's there. I can pull on my my shoulder strap and it comes out and I can bring it out. If not, I'll go from just a shoulder carry or I will cradle it where my thumb will actually be over the bolt covering the trigger guard. Just It's just comfortable. I can just cradle it that yeah. way in my arm, thumb on the bolt covering that trigger guard. And like I said, I, I do walk not cocked because, oh, there's a deer. I, I, as I'm shouldering it, I can have that cocked yeah. and armed. And you can get it ready, off. right? Yeah. So I, just, I like to make as le- the least amount of noise possible. So that's yeah, I'm just... noisy as hell. I usually trip. <laughs> so <laughs> I know I know what my limitations are. And I also know if yeah. I'm doing it with somebody else, I'm going to, like, if I have my shotgun, I'll have it broken open and cradling it. Because I know I'm actually having to get to the point where I'm going to be getting and getting settled into. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the same way. I'm not an experienced hunter, so I'd prefer to walk it through the woods empty and then get to my spot. Like everybody's laid out, and again, you know, I know what my lines are, and then then I'll load it and get it ready and stuff. So I'm just more comfortable that way so far than yeah. I've done it. I'll have people yelling. That. Yeah, and I'll have people yelling at me, Kelly. And I'm going, <laughs> just hold on. They're not waiting for you. And I go, I know. And then bang. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, so. I think that's yeah, yeah. That's that's about it. Is, is there anything else to talk about for hunting for safety? Uh, uh, I would say just like wait for crossing fences or whatever. Like it's yeah. same thing. Unload. Yeah. Unload. Oh, while, while and I, if you I have run... to cross a fence, you know what? Take your right. Find a fence post. Take your rifle. Put it on the opposite side of the fence. Lean it up yeah. against the fence post. Crawl through the fence. Grab your life rifle and go. Don't try and shimmy your way through a barbed wire fence or yeah. whatever with a rifle slung on your back or trying to no you're just asking guess what you're not going to shoot anything air. as you Step traverse over. that fence <laughs> so put your gun down get through the fence pick up your gun there you go <laughs> gun in the air somersault and then yeah. catch and land you must have been yeah. following me when I go getting to my hunting location because it's like tuck and roll <laughs> we're dead yep. hey sure. dustin how's it going hello hello everybody going well can you hear me all right you bet yep. yeah awesome all right good i was fighting with my audio so i just you guys are talking about this and i, yeah. I want to talk about it because i i have yet i just about made a video about this oh, it was so hey. infuriating um, oh, okay. so a, all right so anybody that doesn't know um i'm a prop master and armor um, in Vancouver, I deal with guns, and uh, all guns are prop guns. By the way, if it's a, if it's a, anyway, that's that's a whole other thing. You guys are talking about safety, and specifically in regards to like, oh well, you should have checked that the gun was loaded, right? Yeah. And that's and that's completely fair. So odds are, I don't have a single action revolver in front of me, but I have a. a not single action revolver. Uh, well, it's a double action double, double GP one hundred, yeah. but um, same sort of concept. So if I hand an actor a gun, call it a cold gun. Now that's my job, right? That's my job to safe and clear those guns before they go into an actor's hands. So with a revolver, we have to load something in the guns, right? So pardon me, I'm going to point a gun at you guys now, so you can see that gun looks loaded, right? Correct. Okay. So and even more so. That gun mm. looks very loaded, right? Mm. Yep. Mm-hmm. I did not break the law. These are dummy rounds. These are camera dummies. This is specifically. So they look real, right? It's a real projectile, real case, uh, de-wadded primer, but unstruck primer, right? So odds are this is probably what, what happened. The difference between this thing, I don't know if you guys can hear it. Yeah. You guys hear that? Okay, yeah. so we put a ball bearing inside of every one of these so that we can check every round before we put it into the mm. gun to uh, know that that is right. not a live yeah. round, right? So now, traditionally, mm. what we would do in a scene, like these, these I'm really careful about. I don't put ones with unstruck primers in the gun unless I really need to because I don't like it at all. 
Um, so traditionally what we'll do is ones with struck primers, right? So same deal, ball bearing looks real. I can load this into a gun and you know, we'll put six of them into a gun after we've cleared and saved it, right? Check the chamber, check the barrel, then I'll load the gun. Bear with me while I do this because I'm try and go a little bit faster than I usually do on set. I play a little bit of Red Dead Redemption. Usually my guy loads a lot faster than this. <laughs> uh, I, you know, there's, 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 one thing, there's one thing on a film set, though, like, we don't go fast with guns. Yeah. You have to, right? Like, no, yeah, this, is, this is the reality. Obviously, there was lots of other issues with that film set. But anyway, so here we have a gun. I'll load the gun. Gun with open action will come to set with me together with the actor and the ad by the way the ad had no no business handling that firearm at any point that's not their job they shouldn't have been handling it but mm -hmm. once you know we'll roll up with this gun okay so we've loaded dummies in this gun and you know with a gun like this we can like see oh okay these are all struck primers nonetheless once we close the action and i'll let the actor do it too but i'll do it first just if, if we're going to have an nd it should be my fault not the actor's fault no. um and seven times you know, into the ground somewhere that's going to be safe and if it's a six cylinder revolver i'm going to pull that trigger seven times and if the actor wants to do it i'm gonna let him pull it seven times before that gun gets pointed at anything or anybody right that's how on set firearm safety procedure is supposed to be done right shouldn't be a uh, an ad saying here cold gun that's i mean that's a thing it's 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 fair to say yeah well baldwin should have checked his gun man but the gun was loaded and, he, and it looked loaded, right? Him checking the gun wouldn't have helped. And because it's a single action, you know, with a loading gate, he's not going to yeah. pull six rounds out, rattle check them himself and load them back mm -hmm. in. You know, that's, that is actually our job. It's our job to do that. So that was the biggest, um, the biggest upset. And I feel like a lot of people don't understand that, especially in the gun community. Mm -hmm. Obviously still, we don't point guns at people unless you absolutely, absolutely have to. I, I won't talk about, like that side of things, but it would have been a really easy mistake to, you know, be handed a gun. You've been told it's a cold gun that looks loaded and you know, the other stupidity that happened. So sorry, I just wanted to pop on and say that because. Well, we have a lot of questions for you. Yeah. So yeah. because we are the firearms <laughs> industry, right? Or we are firearms owners and yeah. we are super safe, obviously. Mm -hmm. So uh, Sean wants to know what's the procedure to use with blanks. Um, is there a different procedure with blanks versus dummy rounds? Yeah. Well, so like the procedure for blanks. So the blanks go into the gun, the very last thing. Um, if we can at all help it, we'll get them all set up and give them either a rubber or, you know, a, a cleared, a cleared empty gun for all the camera stuff. The very last thing I'll ever do is hand an actor a loaded gun, even with blanks. Blanks can still okay. kill. Blanks can still yeah. hurt. They're dangerous. Um, so usually the procedure is we'll get, all the camera stuff set up. Usually, I'll get the get your actor, you know, practicing with a uh, with a dummy gun, a rubber. I actually I felt so bad the last show I, I did. Uh, I started doing something new. I actually ripped apart an old soldering gun and I put a uh, I put a tennis ball on the end of it, and that is now my actor's camera weapon of choice. They don't get to say nobody's going to get upset about this orange fluffy ball, but it works for camera. It lets them pick up their because like well, you know, that's a good idea. Yeah, people don't understand. Like, there's like you've got you've got like a um, a camera assist who's going to be like measuring the distance between that gun and the camera, and they're going to be pulling focus to that. Like all these things. There's lots of reasons to see a gun pointed on set, but there are solutions that don't involve pointing a loaded firearm at someone, mm -hmm. <laughs> let alone pulling a trigger. Um, but yeah, and so we'll do all of these things, and once this once everything is set, um, I'll be off. You know off to the side, off camera somewhere. I've got my little, my little, um, hip bags where, and I'll be, I'll have my gun loaded and ready. And then with however many rounds we need, they don't get any more. So if there's, if there's going to be two trigger pulls, well, there's two dummies in that gun and then everything else is chambering dummies rounds that won't go off. Right. So mm -hmm. if I know it's going to go bang, bang. And I, you know, even if they're not going to pull the trigger again, maybe they will, who knows? I want to be accountable for every round. So two rounds go in, everything else is chambering dummies close the gun, hot gun on set. At that point, I'm in charge. And I hand the gun to the actor. They do their shot. Once they call cut, nobody moves until I go in, <laughs> relieve the actor of that gun, open it, clear it, safe it, 
clear and safe on set, and then everybody can do their work. That's how we do every single blank fire every time. That's how you keep people safe. Okay. So what can I ask a question that goes, goes into a little bit more depth with the blanks? Is there like a chamber check before you insta- load the blanks into the gun? Oh, yeah. We check the chamber all the time. You see me like off camera somewhere. Cause, um, so this is the other thing is that uh, people don't realize like we'll have at least like – so if, if I've got an actor with a gun, I have another one of those guns on me. Right. So I usually at least one, um, I look like a, you know, um, well, you guys will know. So, uh, I actually use a couple of, um, couple of, uh, um, um, mag pouches, like the, the dump pouches for mags, like, you know, yep. the big round dump pouches. So I got, I look like a goofball, but I got two of those on a, on a tactical belt and like a toolkit on the, on a small on my back. And so like, those are my dump pouches. Gun goes in here, stuff goes in here. And then like, I kind of got everything prepped in my other one. So I'm going to be sitting there prepping and clearing clearing this gun so you know we'll check the chamber check everything we're gonna make sure there's nothing down the barrel the thing with semi-automatics anything that uses any kind of gas operation uh, or any kind of blowback action um, the gun is going to be uh, threaded and we'll have a constrictor down the barrel so I'm gonna okay. be sitting there with my little my little allen key wrench making sure that that constrictor is as tight as it's ever been doesn't matter that it's halfway down the barrel and a lot of things got to go wrong for it to work its way out every take sitting there doing that checking okay there's nothing in this barrel that i'm gonna that could ever even possibly be a projectile great well you know i'll have the mags loaded and then the same thing that gun doesn't get loaded until the very last thing i'm gonna have my mags loaded in one pouch gun sitting in the other clear and safe and and i'll i'll do that a hundred times a day it doesn't hurt at all to be extra safe i'll it's it's not unusual to see me sitting there offset just like checking the guns making sure that they're fine because that's how people don't get hurt Okay. Well, this is yeah. actually a question that specifically talks to is it, uh, Travis Lee asks, is there a possibility the chamber was checked, but the expectation bias took over? And since this is such a repetitive task. I, all right. So like I, I've been on these sets. I, I know what I know what a budget is like. Yeah. Um, I promise you that they hired somebody who was underqualified and inexperienced mm-hmm. and she didn't do her job and let somebody else who kind of probably, I'm, I'm going to throw the idea under the bus a little bit. I'm going to guess I'm never going to work with them. Um, <laughs> who is probably barking at her because everything's got to be done right now. We're on the clock on the, got to go now, 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 now. Right. So I'm going to assume that there was a, a, a big part of the hiccup was just a time component. I think those guns got probably checked one time. It sounds like that gun didn't get checked at all. Cause they were shooting with it earlier in the day, which is right. Yeah. Well, fuck that is do you bring it live ammo on set like actual no, it's, rounds? No, it's it's a it's a it's a criminal offense in Canada. It goes directly against uh, any any you get any armorer who's got like their their firearms business license. It'll tell mm-hmm. you right on the license you cannot have live ammunition with these guns on set. It is against the law. I pulled my license. There's criminal charges. It's I I, do, I can't speak to what the rules are in the states. I you know I, I've obviously it's a this is a small community I, and uh, like. They've all been talking since this. And like, yes, I've had my m- mind blown about like just the state of things down there. Cause like, it's, it's odds are, you know, a crew of 150 people, probably 10, 15% of them got guns in the car at the very least. Right. Yep. So it's not unusual. True. The idea that, like True. they, you know, and they're out in the desert, they went planking. I get that. I've been out on like away shows where we're out in the middle of nowhere. I've brought guns to away shows out in the middle of nowhere. That doesn't, I have rules. Um, there are no live and there's never a single live round ever comes to the prop truck. Right. So everything kind of like lands on the prop truck. That's where your guns go. Everything mm-hmm. gets stored either in the safe on the prop truck, or you're going to have like a, a safe storage set up specifically for the guns. Right. And your first level of protection is there's no live ammunition on the prop truck ever. Zero mm-hmm. tolerance for it doesn't happen. Right. So, so that, you know, already, even though like I can look at those bullets sitting on the prop truck and I'm like, yeah, odds are those are real, but I'm still going to do that. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and, and I, and, but at the, at the same time, I've been on sets and I've, I've, uh, where somebody had some ammo and they're dressing in the dressing in a set and you're like, just for fun. Like I'll see bullets on a, on a desk or something like that. And you go like, pick one up, shake Thanks it. Have it. Oh, that doesn't No, We're going to, we're going to get rid of those right now before, yep. you know, because you, you don't know it's odds are, it's probably just like a dummy that someone's loaded that has nothing in it, but we don't know. Mm-hmm. Right. So. Well, I, I guess that was sorry, Kelly. No, go ahead. I I'll save my question until you're done because I have lots. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess that was kind of 
more on my i had a question on enforcement and like okay not on the blanks but okay you give an actor a gun what's the enforcement of that they don't have and of course this is like way outlandish but that they don't have live rounds in their pocket like how much time alone do they have with that firearm uh, I, I won't hand an actor a gun that I'm not in a line of sight with at all times. It's again, I mean, at least in the Canadian context that, that falls into that realm of like, I still need to be directly supervising them. Odds are that actor doesn't have a firearms license. That gun is out under my name. I am responsible for it. And, mm-hmm. uh, and as such, it doesn't leave my line of sight. I might get out of the way, you know, for a camera. Like I've, I've had times where I've had to like just step out of the way so i'm not and maybe i'm not for a second in direct line of sight of it while the action's going off Mm -hmm. but i am within immediate as close to immediate control as possible at all times right Mm -hmm. you don't leave actors alone with guns they're children (laughs) okay i i I can believe that (laughs) well it's 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 delegation of responsibility right like the actor's responsible for getting the take right not for checking the gun or doing all these other things Mm -hmm. that's you hire someone specifically for that to do that job Alec Alden is anti-gun, man. He, he, you don't get much more anti-gun than the guy. Uh, so is it is it fair to expect him to be a firearms expert because he's shooting a gun on a show? No, it's it's no more fair than expecting anybody I've ever taken to the range to be a firearms expert before I put a gun in their hand. They're but, relying on me the same way. But I will, uh, I'll push back on that. Hmm? And the reason is because Alex, ah, not Alex, Alec Baldwin, this isn't his first rodeo with respect to firearms. He's been in a lot of movies that he's shot the fact, that, the fact that he was the producer and also the producer a little bit of the well. responsibility on yeah. his end yeah yeah, yeah. it's still it's still it's still the armorer's responsibility yeah. to but I, I will push yeah. back on that as well okay so dustin you are both a prop master and an armorer yep do you do both roles at once or depends on the show uh it, it, all right so like for instance i'm actually i'm just gearing up next week i'm going to be away for a month just armor gig right uh for for a series um if if i'm doing a show if i'm propsing if i'm like prop master for a show and maybe we light off a couple of blanks like there's going to be one gun we're going to have two rounds one day bang bang that's it i've done those shows okay. um yeah i'm just going to do it i'm licensed for it it's fine it doesn't require a whole bunch of my focus i can tell my team hey this day i'm armorer so i i up until that point okay. And then that day, that's my only job. Don't bother me. I'm focused on guns and making sure no one gets hurt. But if there's lots of guns, like the show I'm, I'm about to go on to, there's lots of guns, requires lots of focus. No, you hire someone for that. That's what the armor is there for. My only job on this show for the next month is just firearms. Okay. So that's what was taking place. Apparently, she was both the prop master as well as the end. It's a Western. I would assume there's more than one day with firearms. Yeah, right? I've read I've read some interviews with some like uh, with a particular prop master that turned the gig down. And again, like I, I know I've been on these low budget shows. I know that they're they're chasing after every penny and any opportunity to to not hire an extra person they will yeah. um and so like that's that's probably what happened right yeah. they didn't hire someone because it was cheaper and this girl could do the job and i'm not sure what the licensing requirements are in the states i think they're probably less so than here probably right so well this is probably second. still insurance yeah. like you, you yeah. probably still need to be yeah. insured and there's probably some prerequisites to like process to to be insured for that kind of thing i just I like May, maybe like I, I guess her dad is a pretty well-known armor like because she this is her second job right like right. I, I'm upset as a prop master her calling herself a prop master I've been doing that job for 10 years I know I've got the same colorful hair that she does <laughs> and that's been just great for me but uh, uh, you know but I, I've been doing the job for 10 years I've got over 30 credits and 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 I can call myself that I can call myself an armor I, I feel fine doing that mm-hmm. but she had no business calling herself either of those jobs the experience by the way sean loves that uh the way that you handle your business you're the boss not the actor yeah so you're in charge of everything yeah when the when the guns come out especially if there's especially if there's any kind of live fire i'm in charge i don't care i'll fight i i had one show there was one series earlier when again when i was a little younger and it was like it was one of those shows where i was i was prop master and armor we were only doing a little bit of gunfire and i had a director that uh she decided she wanted she wanted an actor to point a blank gun at another actor uh, in, in a way that was not going to be safe. And there was no way for her to achieve this shot safely. Like our job, like the other job as an armor is to like help you achieve a shot that you want without putting anybody in danger. So like rule of thumb, mm-hmm. blank fire, minimum of a meter distance between where that gun is pointed and any anything living, mm-hmm. right? Minimum of a meter 
if you can do two, great. And usually you can cheat up to two meters without ever noticing, yeah. right? Um, with, with the right camera angle. This director fought me and uh, she thought she, she was gonna win. And, uh, and I was like, that's fine, I can leave. Uh, she's like, well, you can leave, you can quit. I'll fire you right now, but you leave the guns. And I was like, oh no, yeah. <laughs> the guns come with me. Those are rented yeah. under my license. Do you have a firearms <laughs> business license? No, that's okay, I'll, I'll leave now. Um, and thankfully, like I had a, I had a production manager who obviously had my back. They, they don't need the insurance liability of, of doing something dangerous. Right. So mm -hmm. I say, Hey, the director wants me to do something dangerous. And I've told her I will leave. He's like, please don't leave. Don't do anything dangerous. What she's asking you to do is illegal. I'm like, I'm aware. So, you know, but again, if you're, if you're new and you're young and you're either willing to make some of those, some of those like sacrifices to do, to do the job, to like get that, get those titles, or just because you're afraid to stand up for yourself. Like, I think there's yeah. a lot of those things that happened, right? Mm -hmm. Intimidation. Yeah. 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 Well, it seems like there was multiple failings. It's not just on one person. There was multiple failings throughout the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was multiple failings just on that, in, in that one incident. Right. So you have to understand mm -hmm. that like, we put a lot of effort into making sure something like this never happens, right? Even the Brandon Lee thing wasn't this. A live round found its way into a gun and was Correct. used to shoot someone. I, yeah. I don't actually think I've ever heard of that happening before. And uh, and you have to understand the amount of safety pr protocols that were completely ignored for that to happen are so huge. Everybody in the prop industry, we've all been talking about it. Like, how? How does this even occur? Like yeah. the, the breakdown of safety, it started the second those guns left wherever they were being stored and it just perpetually like dominoes, yeah. they all fell from there. I think that it, it started even before that because there was three previous NDs. I, yeah, that's wild too. Um, I, I've been on sets with NDs before. Uh, we, I, we actually, there was, I was on a budget show when I was younger. We, we fired an armor who was like a budget armorer because he was busy talking and left a loaded gun in an actor's hand and the actor had it go off and that's still an ND and you know, mm -hmm. nobody got hurt, but I, that, that's a that blank, was, right? That, so when you guys, when we're saying NDs, just, for yeah, that was a, that's a blank round. That wasn't a live yeah. round. Right. So basically uh -huh. what happened in that situation, right. Is so, you know, armor puts the, puts the machine gun and it was, you know, army boy scene and uh, you know, they go do, I think they were doing a shoot house sequence or whatnot. So, you know, machine gun blast, machine gun blast, machine gun blast. And, and we call cut and we do that scene a couple of times and then it's time to turn the camera around while well, camera turnaround is about a half hour, right? So there's about a half hour of downtime. The very first thing, the second that that camera calls cut, the armor should be doing is going and taking those guns, right? Um, mm -hmm. I was a little green. Clearing them. Yeah, I was a little green at the time, right? I was a little younger and 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 like I, I knew this, but I'm letting him do his job. And I, I realized that he was not doing that job. He was busy chatting with someone while the camera's turning around. He just left the guns in the actor's hands and uh, the actor didn't really think about the fact he had a loaded gun in his hand. It was pointed down, thankfully. Mm -hmm. um, and bang, bang, a couple of shots go off. And that was that guy's last day on set, the, the armorer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Took over? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, took, I took over for the rest of that show kind of begrudgingly. And, uh, um, you know, that was that was my little trial by fire. That scared me. Having an ND on your set, that's like, yeah, I, I'm I getting anxiety imagine. thinking about it, right? That's scary. That yeah. shouldn't happen. So. Mm -hmm. so what do you think uh, you said that the ad called cold gun so let's ta talk about specifically what a cold gun is and it was for a rehearsal as yeah. opposed to an actual filming so he took it off of so the ad is the one that gave him the firearm already this is wrong Okay. Like that, let's yeah. walk us through it. Something's Sounds very wrong. wrong from there, right? Like the AD has no business touching the firearms ever. Is the AD an actor? Does is the AD a member of the props team? No. If the answer to, to both of those questions is no, he has no business touching the guns. I absolutely clear the gun with them. Like I do. That every take, a good AD will be there looking in the chamber, making sure, verifying that those guns are clear. Right. Um, that's a good AD. Uh, a bad AD is handing an unclear gun to an actor saying it's cold without anybody having verified it. Right. So like I can give you guys like a, like kind of a, a walkthrough of what happens. So start a day. Um, like, let's say we know, we know scene, scene 12 is coming up. Alec Baldwin's going to be, you know, playing with his revolver. Okay. So before, before scene 12 happens, let's say they're still shooting scene 11. Okay. Let's, let's get the, uh, let's get the guns unlocked. So we'll go to the safe, pull the guns out of the safe. Um, and, uh, First thing that happens while we're on the prop truck, let's safe and clear them, right? So obviously they're going to be stored legally, like 
in Canada they have to be. So, you know, completely unloaded, trigger locked, in a locked safe. That's like, even though we use a safe, I still demand that my, my all my guns be trigger locked inside the safe. It's just an extra thing. So we'll unlock, yeah. them, prove them safe and clear. Great. Okay, let's trigger lock it. Let's put it in its own little gun case. Let's lock that. Let's take that gun case to set. So now that's that's our like chain of evidence, if you will. That safe and clear gun ha- is, has made its way to set. And on my on on my prop truck, uh, I also have a little sign out book. Anybody that takes a gun out of the safe, you put the serial number, you put the time, you put who you are, and and you are now responsible for that gun until that gun comes back. You are responsible for it. If it's me, if it's one of my on set guys, that's uh, like that's the very start. You're responsible for that from that point on, right? Um, anyway, so you take that gun to set. And now you're usually going to have an onset who's going to be actually dealing with the actors. And then you'll have your, your onset armor. So you'll, that gun will come to set. And that gun is that armor's responsibility now. Okay, so they're going to do the same thing. They're going to open that, unlock that case, unlock the gun. We're going to prove it, you know, safe and clear. Awesome. Now we get into the, okay, so now now we need to load the gun because we're going to do dummies. We're going to be seeing the seeing the chamber. Okay, so if we're not seeing the actor loading the gun, there's absolutely no reason for us to ever need unstruck primers. Let's go. With, let's load the struck primers into the gun. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing one at a time. Rattle, load into the gun. Rattle, load into the gun. Okay, we got all six rounds in. We can see we've got six six struck primers. There's nobody around. Let's do. Let's just do a quick safety check right here and pull the trigger seven times into the ground. Okay, we're good. All right, good. Now let's go. Let's go have a, t- a conversation with our actor and our AD. So we're going to walk through those same steps with the actor and the AD. Okay, this gun. We, we've got it loaded with dummy blanks here, or, or sorry, with not with blanks, with dummy rounds. Um, struck primers. Uh, this is like the one step where if it's like a single action, I'll, I'll probably load them before we'll go through that. Otherwise, we'll safe and clear the gun beforehand, right? Okay. But we'll do the same thing, and then we will with the actor there pull the trigger seven times into the ground. If the actor wants to do it, go for it. And that's, and now, now that's a cold gun. We can call that a cold gun. And then that'll go out over the mm-hmm. walkie cold gun on set. So mm-hmm. we all have walkies. We all, we can all hear when there's a hot gun, when there's a cold gun. So you're just aware of what's going on right now. All the mm-hmm. channels will get, if there's a hot gun, if we're doing live fire, um, that's going to get called out on all the channels um, for obvious reasons. Right. But you also, anytime there's a gun on set, you want to know there's a gun on set. So that nobody freaks out, right? Um, like these are all important things. Uh, and then obviously the other thing that I'm missing, uh, we have a safety meeting every morning, or at least they're supposed to be. Apparently the set didn't have them at the very start of the day. When you talk about today's work, because we get you know our 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 call sheet, we know what we're working on today. The very start of the day, we're going to talk about okay, scene eleven. We're doing live fire. Here's our safety procedures. Anybody has any questions, comments, you feel free to talk to me at any point. Anybody who feels unsafe, you say something. Um, you know, that's the first point where we bring this stuff up. I can't believe that they were plinking with these guns over lunchtime. Mm. Don't, don't get me wrong. Like I, I, you know, there's, I, I, I know that guns like that, that, you know, some of, some of these prop guns can be used for that, especially, you know, revolvers. There's, yeah. there's, they don't need to be uh, constricted in any way. So they're fully functional firearms, right? Same with anything manually operated. You see a pump action shotgun or bolt action rifle on, on, on camera, odds are that's a fully functional gun. Um, and and odds are maybe it's had rounds put through it at some point, but those rounds should never be on set ever. No. Sorry, my little, I haven't had a chance to rant to like other people about Do you feel this. better now? <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, yeah so like you're you came on you were watching you're going i'm going there's dustin dustin should be on this and dustin's been you've been on the show several times and you talk about being an armorer as well yeah and it's important because again we're gun owners we're super safe we would probably let's say i'm not saying we would probably never encounter this or because we, we go through everything the way that we go through it and inexperienced mm-hmm. people don't and has to be know. layered on has to yeah. be layered on just it's just like people working in the oil and gas industry they do the same thing they do a safety meeting in the morning yeah. they have very strict policies they go through because otherwise people die it's you have yeah. to follow uh, you have to layer on the safety and you have to follow mm-hmm. the rules i can't i can't fathom a good reason for this gun to have been pointed at at that you know dp 
re regardless, like, again, this was, this was a camera test. There was no reason for that gun to be pointed at her. There's no reason to pull the trigger. I get it. It sounds like he was being funny or something. Um, like this is, this is, this is rule number one on set two. And this is like, I've told people this, I've, I've, I've had this like conversation in text many times. Rule number one with all firearms on set, doesn't matter if it's made out of rubber, you assume that that gun is real, it is loaded, and it is dangerous. And it's, it's the second that you start from there, and my whole team knows that, anybody that works for me knows that, the second that that is where you start, mm -hmm. and, you, and you work from there, um, and you're right, uh, average law-abiding gun owner, this wouldn't happen to, because they mm -hmm. wouldn't have, regardless of how how safe that gun was supposedly, um, they wouldn't have pointed it at her. Yeah. You know. Maybe if it was a, you know, had a rubber tennis ball at the end and it was a welding. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I, I, I'm sure there's going to, nobody's going to make fun of me for that anymore. I, no, our, right? our, last, our last actor, uh, I, won't, I won't say who he was because the movie's not out yet. Um, he's a pretty, pretty well-known actor. He wasn't happy with me when we like, we put that in his hand. I'm like, I get it but nobody's uncomfortable with it and all the yeah. camera stuff can be done and we'll put the real gun in your hand when it needs to be there, you know, yeah. and it's just an added level of safety, right? I, I'm not, I'm not part of the camp of ban all live guns on set. Live guns look good on set. Um, and there's a lot of cases I, uh, I think they're going to paint themselves into a corner if they actually try pulling that, especially in the States. Cause there's a lot of stuff you can't fake. Well, there's not mm -hmm. a lot of like good cowboy action revolvers. You want to talk about cowboy movies without real guns? Good luck. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. well, I wanted to ask you about what, it, so you and the rest of the prop masters and the armors, you've been chatting, obviously. So yeah. what are some of the implications and what are some of, what's the blowback then? Because we've seen it, we've seen it's, it with the rookie, they're using air guns. Yeah, yeah gas guns. So gas actually, guns. so um, gas guns are pretty common. They're, they're dewatered airsoft guns, right? Yeah. So, you know, they'll still function, but they won't fire a projectile anymore. Uh, the nice thing about that is, right, you can literally put them up to your face, pull the trigger if you want, and you're not going to cause any damage. So there's some benefits there. The show I'm doing, we're doing almost exclusively gas guns because of the location. The location doesn't want us to do live fire. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, that's fine. At least you get a little bit of the recoil. I feel very bad. So there's like a, like a kind of main armor company in town here with like, oh, it's, it's Candyland there. And, and, I, and I walked into their... Uh, the day after this happened, I was, I was planning on pulling guns for, for my show. And I went a couple days, like as soon as this happened, I was like, Oh no, I was going to do that next week. I'm going to do that right now. And uh, because their phone wouldn't quit ringing it like ev while I was there, I swear to God, that phone rung probably 30 times and like big shows who are like, no, we were doing live fire and we are not now. Uh, we're going to be transferring out all of our stuff for, you know, replicas, yeah. gas guns, anything that we can. Um, you know, there's some big name shows that are doing that. And I, and I feel really like the reality is give it a couple of years and it'll be probably better. We probably won't, you know, we'll probably have live fire again. There's going to be a lot of gas guns on shows for the next couple of years. So brace yourselves for some pretty crappy recoil. <laughs> a lot of actors like shoot machine guns with no recoil and nothing coming out the side and it's going to drive us all wild. <sighs> Great. Awesome. Yeah. I'm sorry. Something I'm sorry. to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's some big shows. It's, it's, yeah. it's sad and unfortunate. I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to come over, come on and like take over your show or anything. I just. This is awesome though. Yeah. It's quite yeah. No. A couple of people are asking what shows are you, you know. Can't talk about it. You can't talk about it. <laughs> no. No. We won't tell anyone. Go ahead. No, crazy <laughs> no. I, I won't do that. I won't talk about specifics. I can't talk about that. I won't even talk about my own show. If it's not out yet, I won't talk about it. But cool. uh yeah, uh, but there's there's some big shows, some shows that people are like, some so shows I was excited for. There's like, there's some stuff where I'm like, oh no, they're doing that. That's awful. Like, I don't watch a lot of those cop procedural stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, like anything that's filmed in New York is already done that way. And, uh, okay. you know, so there's, but there's some big shows coming and it's sad. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for him? No, I, 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 I was I was uh, worrying about how we'd cover the uh, the Baldwin thing and and whether like how we'd be able to talk through it and uh, you bring our buddy we better have, we better have <laughs> on. Yeah, really. But I was I just I, I happened to be looking on. I was like, oh, they're oh oh, oh they're talking about safety on. Oh yeah, no, I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a comment right now and be like, hey, you, you you know something that could have post. triggered me. I went, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Want to be on? Yeah. 
anyway, I sorry for like you know coming and just randomly taking oh. over a bit, but oh, nice to see yeah, I should yeah. have. Called, I should have reached out to you. Yeah, well, it worked out. I was. Uh, I was yeah. home. Perfect. There's a lot of good information there. Like, yeah. 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 Well, and and again, you know, if any, like, I, I just want to say, like, union, like there, there was no union crew. This was this girl's second job, probably ever. Yeah. And, I, and I, I, I just, it's, it's not fair to paint my industry or my profession. I got in an argument with somebody, like a gun owner, a good friend of mine, who's like, there should be no job as a prop master or an armorer. And I'm like, I am going to respectfully disagree with you on that. And here's why. Uh, my jobs are important. But, yeah. uh, you know, and, 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 you know, thankfully she, you know, she had her mind changed then she sent me a little nice little private message. She's like, I'm sorry. I maybe, you know, cause you know, it's just some, some of, some of our community, it's, it's ironic because some of them are coming off a little bit kind of like the anti-gunners when they don't know what they're talking about. And, mm. and, and there's a lot of that, right? Like it's mm-hmm. easy as a, it's easy as a law abiding gun owner to have like that, that level of safety that's so drilled into us that we would never let something mm-hmm. like this happen. And how dare Alec Baldwin mm-hmm. let something like this happen when there's like, it's not entirely his fault. So no, there's it's other not. people who are responsible. No. There's other it. people who are responsible. Yeah. It's their job to be responsible. Mm-hmm. It's not his job to be that guy. And and especially in the context of like a single action, stupid revolver with a loading gate that like safety checking those things is a pain in the ass and takes time. And somebody should have been just doing that. So yeah, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. 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 Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you guys for letting me come on and rant. I'll I'll, I'll leave you now and enjoy watching the rest of the show. So, um, thank you. all right, take care. Thank you, Dustin. Yeah. Thank you, Dustin. Oh, oh, wrong, wrong. There we go. Remember when <laughs> Dustin came on and he was the other Kelly? No, that was too long ago. How many was, episodes? How many episodes ago was that? I was looking back a while ago, and mm-hmm. it popped up like last week and it was the other kelly dustin that was about two or three years ago mm. mm-hmm. yeah he came on one night substituted in for me Didn't slam fire me. slam fire flashback is brought to you by <laughs> yeah. so awesome anyway. memory awesome so we got some good information on on the that was great procedures on a, that was great on a, on a movie we were, set yeah we yeah. were easing our way into the topic and i think that worked out perfect i mean yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. yeah. Um, well, let's let's cover a couple more of these, and then let's let's get back to the to the rest of the show. Okay. Uh, dry fire, Mo. You just said that you were dry firing. What's what's your yeah? Uh, procedure? So for for me, from day one, I, I dry fire almost every day, and uh, I'm the only one that ever touches my pistol. I you know take it out of the safe, I put it back, but I always go through the same. You know, I check it every single day, mm-hmm. and then with with ammo, I have I have a couple of dummy mags. And then I also use um, I use some dummy rounds too. But again, even if um, when I go to pick up that mag that has the dummy rounds in, I actually I look at it and I pop a few of them out and I put them back in. I just have this like habit of just always doing that, right? And I know I don't have any live ammo there, but I still go through that because if I'm going to be pointing the gun in my house, I'm going to make sure that it, yeah, there's no chance that that thing is loaded. So yeah, I do that. Yeah. Do you put them in different locations as well? Like uh, this is no. I have I have like a little bin. I have a little bin on top of my safe, and I keep I keep my uh, practice stuff all in that in that okay. bin, right? So yeah. that I know I know that bin doesn't does not have live ammo. So right. okay, I'm well, that. I was going to ask. She asked, "What do you have for a visual identifier that that's a dummy round, not a live round? Is it just the spent primer, or it, do you use a different? No, it's a red. It's a red. Or? It's a tip tipton." Tipton? Tip yeah, you use the red. Yeah, yeah the red. Yeah, yeah. It, it's Blast. very clear. It's very clear yeah. that it that's, you know, not I a I still real like line. using, uh, like, the dummies I've got have some weight to it. So I use, like, a, a, a real case, a real bullet, no primer, and yeah. uh, uh, drilled inside. And then that way, uh, when I put my mag in, I, I get the full weight of it. Because if you okay. if you insert an empty mag in some guns, nothing will happen. If you insert a full mag in some guns, some of them will reliably the slide will go forward, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, I like to use that to. to Do to you still it, visually so. inspect uh, each yeah, one of them? Absolutely. Yeah. Like if, if I'm going to dry fire, um, I'll ch- I'll unload the mag uh, and look at all of the rounds. Uh, the, it won't be loaded anyways. The, the the all my dummy rounds all sit in a box of just dummies. And so yeah. if I'm going to load up a mag or something like that, it's it's just. As I'm loading each one of them, I check make sure that they're empty or there's no primer in them. 
Yep. Uh, if I'm dry firing with someone else, I will all will do reciprocal. So you you clear your stuff, and then I'm going to clear your stuff too. I'll pull the mags right out of the pouch, take a look at them, give me your gun, take a look at that. Your gun's clear. Your mags are clear. Yep. They'll do the same thing for me. That's and it's, uh, they, it's not that they don't trust me. It's that uh, I don't trust anyone. <laughs> Adriel, would yeah. you trust me? I'd still check your gun. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right answer. Good answer. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, okay. like the the repercussion of of dry fire and having a round go off is you could uh, hurt or kill someone. Yeah. You could dis- destroy some property. You could have the cops to your place uh, uh, inv- oh, investigating yeah. a, a round yeah. going off. Do not want that. Do not want no, that. I don't know what the different. repercussion of that would be. Can't imagine it would be great. It's, yeah. Yeah. No, no good comes out of that. So. Nope. Or, I mean, at the, at the very worst, like, best, you still have to patch your wall. Yeah. You still have to crack out the drywall mud. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Your roof isn't going to be, like, quite as waterproof as it was before. <laughs> yeah. Like, with my pistol, I don't use dummy rounds a lot. I did make some up, and I had actually had some powder-coated bullets. And so, like, my pistol dummy rounds are actually, like, nickel-plated brass. So they're different the than your regular bullets. ones. They are... Yeah, so they are completely, out, right? completely different. I do leave a spent primer in there because I do like my firing pin coming up on something, not just hitting mm-hmm. free air. So I keep a spent primer in there. But like, and then my shotgun shells is a completely different color that is you basically you have to search to find it. I have black shells that are my dummy rounds. If I had more, I'd make more and sell more. But like, I've made them for people and ask, okay, what color are the shells that you normally use? It cool because I'm not going to sell you that color of shell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dummy shot shells are full for three gun. You you need to practice that, and that's uh, and like with my shot shells that those ones I actually do load up no powder. I actually use old tumbling media that's too dirty as the powder Mm -hmm. and actually put lead shot in there. So and so they are they're within a few grains of an actual loaded shell, Mm -hmm. and you have the tactile feel of a real shell spent primer Wait. still yeah and yeah okay and a very Just different safe. looking case yeah. yeah yes very different looking case and like i said besides the color and the fact that this got a spent primer in it those are your indicators and sometimes i'll put glue up top and put a sticker right on the top of it so like there's multiple ways to tell that that that's not a real shell mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. one thing i would recommend don't spray paint them because the paint will just come off. It'll, just, yeah. it'll end up in your action and it's just going to gum it up. Yeah. You could yeah. drill a hole. You could drill a hole through the case. That's doable for, yeah, for like cool. a nine millimeter or something like that. And you just <laughs> pop, pop a hole right yeah. through there. It's fine. It's a, it's a really clear yeah. way to see that that's not a real, that's not a regular round. Mm-hmm. For sure. Do you do anything different for dry fire, Kelly? Um, no, I just pick a location that would be, I, I have, I make sure that there's no ammo. For one, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Make sure that uh, it's just dummy rounds as well. The red Tipton. Uh, and then the other thing is I choose a location where I know if something does happen, which it's not going to, but I double check everything, obviously. Uh, it's just not going to ma- damage anything. So it's my basement. basement or something. Yeah. It's my basement <laughs> where I have cinder block walls, etc. And I'm not aiming at my TV or anything like that. So it's not going to pull an Elvis. No. <laughs> this show's no good. I would. <laughs> yeah. I would like I dry fire in the basement too. No one's around. There is no live ammo. Exactly. But one of the big things, whenever I'm handling a gun, it's yep. finger inside the trigger. Obviously, it, yeah. it is all the time. And I'm like a movie set. I am checking this gun every time I'm doing yeah, it. I'm racking yeah. it multiple times. Double checking my mag even though I know I don't have live round, rounds around. Yeah. And every time I touch a gun, and I think this is beneficial for everyone, is practice that. Whenever oh, you grab yeah. it, sure, I, like, I uh, just started a Krav Maga, uh, Commando Krav Maga class, and they were doing, and it was just rubber guns. And I had to laugh. Like last night was the first class of that, and it was disarming guns and some of it i i'll reserve my opinion on some of it but i found it funny because i as soon as i grabbed that gun it was okay i was down and 
compress <laughs> high ready with it yeah oh yeah like we're, we're standing there I, I, I end up with it and i'm standing there listening to the instructor and i'm just high ready just <laughs> oh okay and then i'm supposed to point, point to his chest which even though i know it's basically a blue gun but it is black with tape but it's basically a blue gun and i'm supposed to point this at this guy's chest i'm like <laughs> i don't like this <laughs> I like that. yeah yeah I, you know what? It's the exact same thing with me. Like, I, I know it's getting a little off topic, but so, for example, when we do our instruction BOIs for Project Maple Seed, we have uh, just a rifle stock and we have a laser on it, but I don't let anybody go downrange of, <laughs> yeah. of it. Yeah. Downrange of it. And I point it downrange. And I'm modeling something for people or I'm having my instructors model it. I want us to model the safety I, yep. it's important the gun the as as you're switching sides the gun barrel goes up it doesn't sweep <laughs> the crowd even though it's a stock yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's exactly it yep. yeah yeah well, practice that stuff and get yes yeah, you always have those sure, habits in you. Yeah. yeah 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 exactly so what sean, about, likes, uh, sean likes uh pal's jib the cut of cut his of jib his, cut of his cut jib of, specifically yeah. the cut yeah yes. yeah <laughs> Thanks, what about a, a maple seed so so with maple seed we we follow a couple different layers uh what are some of the layers what are some of the uh safety procedures we follow kelly a lot so <laughs> a lot. <laughs> we do at, like that's what i was talking about we have a briefing in the morning and we talk about the expectations as well and we also go through and explain to people how they're going to make their guns safe also mm -hmm. procedures when we go down range what's going to be happening to them uh, so the expectations with uh, going around uh, the firing line, not going through so that uh, they're not, uh, you know, they do not have that temptation to reach down and touch the gun while people are downrange. Uh, we go through six steps of making a rifle safe. Right, Mo? You remember those? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. And uh, they're specific. The team on each side to make sure that they're clear. Yeah. 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 And so we make sure that they are there. It's a level of redundancy as well. Uh, so, for example, uh, magazine out, bolt back, uh, safety on, chamber flag again, and with the ejection port up, and so we can see the uh, the chamber flag again over the muzzle uh, and uh, rifle over the muzzle line, and you step back over the equipment line, and you do not go back over until somebody gives you the command to do so. And uh, if something happens, Kelly gets a little upset when it does happen, like if people are, are playing with rifles and people are down in range, it, it shouldn't happen. But I will get upset if it does happen. Um, let's see what else. Uh, we talk with, we have four safety rules, and they're very, very simple. And the reason that they're simple because we want everybody to understand them. But so Kyle was talking about trigger finger outside, right? Yep. Muzzle direction. So the first one is actually muzzle direction. Muzzle direction is always downrange. Downrange, yep. Uh, figure Sometimes out. Sometimes up. Sometimes up if you're getting to your uh, sling or whatever. Sling up. Yeah. But it's always downrange if you, that's the only other, those are the two acceptable directions. Uh, finger off the trigger until the sights are on the target. So we want to see them high in your finger, high up on the stock. Um, what's the other one? Uh, do not load until given the load command. I forgot that one. So we specifically have a load command and you don't insert your magazine into your rifle until you're given that load command. So you have to listen to those. And then everybody else. So we have 15 people typically on the firing line. Plus we have our instructors. And at that point we make everybody a range safety officer because you know what? 15, 20 people, you know, watching for safety is going to be much easier than just one person watching for it as well. So everybody's responsible for everybody on that line. So it's basically redundancy as well. So lots of redundancy. And and then the reason for that is we've got uh, 15 people shooting all at the yeah. same time. Yeah. So the, any, anytime you're, you've got that many different people all doing, all trying to do shoot at the same time, you got to layer the safety on and make sure that, uh, mm -hmm. that people follow lots those and rules. lots and lots. Uh -huh. Mo, you, Mo, you've been to a maple seed. How yeah. is the safety? So I was, I was just going to say, I, I was very impressed on how organized and, and how the safety was applied from beginning, you know, from the beginning of it to the end and, and how everything is set up. Like there's no chance of anything bad happening, which is great. So, yeah. yeah. So, 
I haven't done a maple seed, but you're the only one. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm the only one. It's, it's I'm the only one in all of Canada that hasn't done one yet. <laughs> uh, but it's sounding like almost like a construction site, whether you're doing a heavy lift or whatever. One person gives the commands, but anybody can stop it. Yeah, everybody owns yeah. a ceasefire command as well. That's, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm hearing and is basically what it is. Yeah. If someone corrects you, there's only one response. Proper response. Yeah. It's thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So if someone's like, "Hey, your muzzle's moving over," oh, thank you. Yep. It's a good approach. I like it. Yeah. I, I try to do it in yeah. in uh, regular life. Someone at work uh, corrects me and says, "Like, hey, you forgot to do this thing," yeah. rather than like, because the back of your brain is always like, "No, screw you. You're wrong. <laughs> I'm right." Like it always wants to rationalize that, right? Yeah. But uh, taking that approach of like, "Oh, you noticed something that I didn't. You're probably right. Thank you." How about a spouse yeah, or approach. partner correcting you? Is that the same? Well, no, no, it doesn't yes, work. Dear. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We no, try to make a habit of separating it spouses. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it a yeah. much happier day. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's there's lots of different safety things that we layer on. And I think that uh, uh, it varies based on the activity. With hunting, you probably are going to kill something. So, you you know, the, the safety has to match that. And whereas with maple seed, mm-hmm. uh, the only thing you want to kill is paper. So. Paper. And there's many people. So you need to layer on those safety aspects. So. Yeah. 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 I think we've nailed this topic. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about on layering on safety? No, just be safe. Just be safe. All I would add is just practice. And those are two big ones, the muzzle control and trigger trigger yeah. control. Every time you touch a gun, practice that. There is no yeah. escape from that. It's just don't get lax in it because then it's just second nature. And every time you grab it, it's going to be. No. Don't assume. Don't get, don't get complacent. Yeah. Yeah. Complacency kills. Like that's the. It does. With um, and every time every time I'm shooting a video and I I'm I'm dry firing a gun, I will show empty on it uh, before I'm doing it, because uh, like of course I clear the guns beforehand. But you know how embarrassing it would be to, to record yourself NDing into the wall or the ceiling. Uh, oh yeah, on video. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that's how you want to yep. triple quadruple. <laughs> Make <Yeah>. sure. <laughs> yeah. Bad enough to do it. Even worse to get it on camera. Oh. <laughs> We've all seen those videos online, though. Not yeah. mine. Yeah. Not yours. No. Wasn't, there a, wasn't there a famous trainer in the U.S. that had a discharge? Who was it? Ayub? Yeah. Masada, Masada no. Ayub? Oh, no. Not Masada Ayub. I'm not sure. There was that that it had happens, a at one of his at, yeah one of his whatever and he had. Oh, uh, I know the one you're talking about. It just happened six months is ago. Is that so. that revolver? No, it was, no, it was long. It was longer than long ago. Oh, it happens. Yeah. Anyways, complacency. Yes, it does. Yeah. yeah. Watch yeah. for complacency. All right. Listener feedback. Listener feedback is sponsored by Armory DC Gunsmith. Armory DC Gunsmith is a full service gunsmith who specializes in firearms refinishing. He offers hot blowing. Oh, you know what we didn't talk about? What? Gunsmithing. Clear your guns before doing any gunsmithing on them. Oh, yes. yeah. I bet uh, Denis over at Armory DC Gunsmith follows lots of safety steps before he starts working on yeah, the gun. Too. Yeah. I would but imagine. Gotta clear so, yeah. Even if you're a new person who comes on and that gun's disassembled, I bet you still got to check that chamber, make sure it's mm-hmm. empty. Okay. Anyways, and check I bet out. You no ammo was around in that back room. Likely. Yep. Yep. Just dummies. Uh, check out his online inventory of new news guns, firearms, accessories, optics, and more at dcgunsmith.ca. Uh, Mo, do you want to read this first one from sure Julian? Can. Um, Hello, Slamfire crew. Your podcast continues to keep me wide awake on my long trek to work. Please continue being awesome. I'm glad we're keeping him awake. Um, I just purchased a Norinco Type 97 Gen 3, and I'm pretty keen to get shooting, but I am having a small issue with it not chambering additional rounds automatically as it should. I'm going to double check it and do another thorough cleaning, but I'm wondering if there's anything I'm not thinking of that you could suggest that does not involve modifying the firearm. Thanks again. (laughs) P.S. Kelly, if you're looking for less expensive property in in New Brunswick, you should check out what McAdam or Harvey have to offer. I know know the houses there can be a lot less and some land lots are pretty large. Cheers, Julian in New Brunswick. There you go. We got a real, real estate tip too. So. Yeah, it sounds sketchy. No. Yeah, 
<laughs> it's a long commute to where I would be working. So, yeah. But I know McAdam and I know Harvey as well since I lived in both Fredericton and Armarco. Um, but the gun dealer is in McAdam, so it's worth the jaunt, I guess. The jaunt. Anyways, <laughs> I, the jaunt. I know what's causing Julian's problems. You do? Uh, 80%, what is that? 80% sure. Okay. All right. okay. Okay. I got two ideas. So, gas selection zero, one, two. If it's at zero, it won't cycle. <laughs> it may eject. It, up. it may no. eject, but it's not going to zero pick up. zero. It cuts oh. it off. It's for grenade launching. There, oh. There's no gas. <laughs> so if it's not if it's not uh, loading and you need to do it manually, uh, that might be it. You need to turn it on to one. Uh, two will like two is like the thing's half rusted out. It's covered in mud. You're in like trench warfare, and you need that it that empty ejected. You put it to number two, and it'll fling it like twenty feet out to the side there. That's what I would bet it would be. Um, but there's, there's other things like, sorry, Kyle, you had some guesses. So gas was my number one to check. Like if it's ejecting, but not picking up around, I'd be checking your gas. Or if he's using metal mags, check your feed lips on mm. your mag. They might be too, too closed in. So it's not picking up the next round from the mag. Yeah. Could be a feeding issue. So we would need to know more, a little bit more about what kind of, uh, what's the chambering bit so uh uh better information to give us would be uh is it failing to feed so the the bolt's coming back bolt goes forward the round doesn't go into the chamber for some reason or another or it doesn't eject the case isn't coming out uh or uh or the case comes out and it gets rammed back in there and and doesn't feed quite right so if you can tell us a little bit more about the specific failure it's it's causing uh that would help but i would check your gas setting and before you get too far, lock tight down your bases because I've heard those Gen 3s, the bases can get a little bit wobbly on them if you don't uh, torque them down. That's all I got to say about that. Cool. Uh, we've been kind of hitting Facebook as we've going along here. Sean yep. says, uh, how dare you? Musat is a saint. <laughs> sorry, 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 Sean. Sorry, sorry Masood. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> Okay, you never even that. Uh, sorry. Yeah. sorry. Sorry to all. <laughs> uh, moving on. Uh, if you'd like to email the show, email the show, uh, email slamfire radio at gmail.com. Uh, Patreon supporters, uh, if you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com, search for slamfire radio over there, and throw us a couple bucks every month. And we'll, uh, I don't know, use it to buy fancy mics or video cameras or backdrops or lights or, you know, that kind of stuff. Shout outs, Kelly. Mm. No. says yes i know says yes That's, it's been there forever in two days because i always have somebody to thank <laughs> uh, nope i'm good all right uh let's see nope on the other two here uh i've got, just got a shout out for uh thomas thanks for uh, coming out to the range with me it was a blast and uh i hope we get out and uh look for some deer uh, on the deer yeah, bring on the deer. I'm more excited about the moose because moose meat is delicious. Deer is like a limit, little bit more limited. Moose is fantastic. Uh, Derek is saying, what's this in reference to? Well, I think it's with respect to layering on safety. Layering safety, on safety at the range. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what it sounds yeah. like. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Inspect Spec backstops, backstops, back vehicles in, know the yep. address of the range, have a first aid kit, know what's in it, know how to use whatever it carries, designate a vehicle that would be in an emergency and let mm -hmm. everyone know where the keys to it are. Yeah. I mean, we all Very go to events. Yeah. This is like yep. super common for uh, a first aid plan or a safety meeting in the morning at a, at a match. Yep. Yep. And double redundancy as well. Yeah. Do you guys carry first aid to, uh, stuff when you go to the range? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I also just put, like on a, on an off day when it's yeah. just you. So on yeah. Saturday when I went, I, the girl that I went with, I, and showed her where my uh, trauma kit was and also my first aid kit and also where there was one on the range as well. And mm -hmm. I said, if you need to use it, here's how you use it. Just don't put it around my neck. That's what I said. <laughs> um, but I started maybe... carrying my stuff in the, in the car and just keeping it in the car because one of yeah, the things I've heard it. is um, you're we more likely to run them. across a car accident, right? Yeah, and use it then. Yeah. So yeah, I always have it in the car. Yeah. Yeah, being in yeah. Fort Mac, where we're around oil field, I'm required. I'm required to have a first aid kit in my truck all the time. Nice. So I I always have that, yeah. and I have a kit on my range bag that I take to the range that has the added tourniquet. Mm -hmm. I am 
plan on actually building just a full out kit that's just in my truck that's both a trauma kit for the range and works as like a class a first aid kit for work mm. yeah yeah i like it then you just know where it is and it's got all the stuff in it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and you've always got it cool cool Leo. Uh, check us out on Gunners Canada. Like us on Facebook. Give us a review. Join the CCFR. And we'll see you next week. See you next week. Uh, so if you have any comments or questions for the show, please send an email to slamfireradio at gmail.com. Now go grab a gun and shoot something. When the talking is over, it's time to get a gun.